Welcome to ECLMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, when we were discussing differences between mass and weight, we mentioned that mass is a scalar quantity and weight is a vector quantity. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss scalars and vectors. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy this last subtopic of our topic force. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define a scalar quantity and even give few examples of scalars. Define a vector quantity and give examples of vector quantities. And then finally, calculate the resultant vector and even define what a resultant uh, vector is. In science, when we do measurement of the size of physical quantities, Sometimes we get values which only describe the size or the magnitude. Magnitude in this case is just a numerical values like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 5. Like you can come to a class and say we have 5 students. But in this case, you have not mentioned the direction in which they are facing. You have just mentioned the number of students. Then you can say, my desk is 60 centimeters of length. In this case, you have just mentioned the size of your desk, but you have not mentioned the direction in which the desk is resting or facing. Now, quantities which only have magnitude, which only have a numerical value, but no direction, they are called scalar quantities. So scalar quantities are quantities which have only magnitude or a numerical value but no direction. Examples of scalar quantities include time, for example, if you say 10 seconds. Here you have not mentioned any direction in which this time is heading. Temperature, like you can say 20 kelvins or you can say 30 Celsius degrees. This temperature does not indicate the direction. If you say energy, like you say 40 joules, in this case, you have not mentioned where your energy is heading to. Speed, if you say 20 meters per second, you have not mentioned the direction in which the body is moving. Area, if you mention something like 100 square centimeters you have not mentioned at what uh, direction is your area volume if you say something like 500 uh, ml milliliters in this case you have not mentioned where your volume is heading to length if you say something like 20 meters you have not mentioned the direction in which this length is headed to it can be either south or north but you have not mentioned then mass, if you say something like 30 kilograms, you have not mentioned the direction of your mass. And then finally, distance. Distance is like length. You have not mentioned anything to do with the distance in which these quantities are heading. We call them scalar quantities. Quantities which only show magnitude, but they don't give us the direction. So we have other quantities which gives us both magnitude and direction. And these quantities, we call them uh, vector quantities. Vector quantities, they give us both a numerical value and they also give us the direction in which the body is moving to. A good example in this case is weight. Remember, when we discussed weight in the last lesson, we said weight is directed towards the center of the earth. Earth, this is our earth. So weight is directed towards that point. So if a body has a mass, let's say, of 20 kgs, then gravitational constant is 10 newtons per kilogram. And then now our weight is going to be 20 times 10, which is going to be 200 newtons. Now, 200 newtons will be our magnitude, and then N will be our SI unit. Now the direction will be towards the center of the earth. So when now you indicate this one, you will say the, the, the weight of this body is 200 newtons towards the center 
of the earth. Now, this one gives us the magnitude. This is the SI unit. And then this last part gives us the direction. So, another example, for example, you can say uh, a force of 10 newtons. A box is pulled by a force of 10 newtons. Let's say this is a box here. And then the force which is pulling the box is 20 newtons. Now the question will be, these 20 newtons, in what direction is this box pulled? So what you do, you draw a compass direction at the center of this box. And then this one will be north, south, east, west. Now if this box is moving in this direction, then now our force will be indicated as 20 newtons east. Like that. Now we have a few examples of vector quantities. The first one is velocity. Velocity is a vector quantity because velocity is determined. Velocity is determined by displacement over time taken. Displacement is distance in a specific direction. So if we know a body which is moving uh, like it has moved 20 meters east. This is what we call displacement, a distance which is accompanied by a, by a direction. Now, if we calculate velocity now, it will be, if it takes like two seconds, so velocity will be 20 meters east over two seconds. So now in this case, it will our velocity will be this one, one, this is 10, so it will be 10 meters east. So this car is moving 10 meters per second east. That is velocity. Momentum, we are going to calculate momentum in a topic in Form 3 called Newton's Law of Motion. And we are going to see that momentum, momentum is equals to, momentum is, is written as a P is equals to mass times velocity. Remember mass does not have direction. But the velocity as we have seen up here is calculated from a distance which has direction. So now this mass will be moving in the direction at which this velocity is moving. Therefore, it is the velocity of this uh, uh, of the body which will give a momentum the direction. For example, if you have 20 kg where it is moving with a body is moving with a speed of 10 meters per second east, then now our momentum, our momentum will be will be 200 kg meter per second east like that so we are going to see that so it must have direction and the direction it will pick from the velocity of the body now we have another one is acceleration acceleration we are going to calculate it acceleration which is written as a is equals to velocity over time taken remember velocity we have said is calculated from a distance in a specific direction so the velocity has a direction for example in this case if we have our velocity as 10 meters per second east and then this body takes a time uh well let's say two seconds so our acceleration will be 10 meters per second east all over two seconds now our answer of acceleration will be uh, here one, here five, it will be five meters per square second east. So that will be our acceleration. So it will take the direction of the velocity and the velocity took direction from displacement where the body was moving to. And then of course displacement, we have discussed it, is the distance in a specific direction. It's a distance in a specific direction so we are going to discuss this more in a topic called linear motion in form 3 but what you should know you should uh, you should be able to know few examples of displacement and how they have magnitude and direction so, so when you are indicating velocity you must accompany it with direction acceleration with direction momentum with direction and even displacement with direction so the second last part of this lesson is a, a combination of scalars and vectors 
colors remember we said they only have size and vector they have both size and direction now we are going to start with the addition of scalars when we add two or more scalars we take their size and add them up and then the result will be a scalar the result will only have magnitude but no direction a good example if we have 20 kg plus 10 kg these are two scalars they are not showing any direction the result will be 30 kg now the result is also a scalar it does not have direction it only has a magnitude if you have something like 220 centimeters plus 50 centimeters it will give you 70 centimeters this one does not have direction it means the result of adding scalars will give you a scalar so if if you add a scalar to a scalar it will give you a scalar no direction no direction it will give you a sub a magnitude only but no direction now when we add two factors together we get what we call a resultant vector and when we do this we have to take into consideration of both magnitude and direction of the vectors involved now a resultant vector is defined as the sum sum means addition it's the sum of two or more vectors taking into account of the direction of the vectors a good example here if we have a, a, a point here or a body here and then someone is pulling to this side with 20 newtons then another person is pulling to this side with five newtons now you, when you stand at the origin first you must know one side you make it positive then this side becomes a negative side now when you want to get the resultant vector then you will take the one which is positive 20 newtons plus because we have said it's a sum into negative 5 we have put this negative 5 because it's in opposite direction so in this case we will get our resultant vector as positive 15 and newtons so this means this vector will go to the positive direction by 15 when you subtract the force which was opposite to it and then now to represent the resultant vector you will draw the same origin and then now the resultant vector will be in this direction which was a positive direction with 15 newtons now let's say you have a case where you have a vector this is the origin one vector moving in each direction like that and then upon reaching 5 newtons it now decides to change the direction upwards and then it moves also uh, 4 newtons 4 newtons now how can you get the resultant vector in this case what you do you stand at the origin then you draw your compass direction then now this is north south east and then west east in this side and then west here then now this vector is moving from here and then the final point of this vector is up there so in vectors we are not interested with where it is going to we are interested from the beginning and to, to the point where the vector is so what you do here you put this vector which is down here 5 newtons and then this one is uh, 4 newtons so this one is a triangle which is 90 degrees and now you use Pythagoras theorem which says a squared plus b squared is equals to c squared this is our a b and then this c and in this case what you will do you will take our a is 5 squared plus b is 4 squared then it will give us c squared which if we calculate here it will be 25 plus 16 is equals to uh, c squared which is going to give us 41 is equals to c squared then to get c you get the square root of both sides now c will be 6.403 newtons but now what is the direction because now we have seen the direct the, 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 the magnitude 
is 6.0.403 now what is the direction the direction you are going to get it by finding this angle here so if you get this angle here you will be taught in mathematics how to find this angle then you would have found the direction for this vector so you will put that angle here that we should show us direction but if you cannot put that then you can even approximate you will say this one is northeast direction this north east so you can say the the c is 6.04 or 6.403 newtons north east direction so in that case you have given that vector uh, its full description it has a magnitude si unit and the direction in which the vector is moving now let's do a few examples so that we know how to add vectors or how to find the resultant vector now the first question is determine the resultant vector due to the following forces so here you must first identify the origin and from the origin you set n vector which moves to the right is a positive vector n vector which moves to the left of the origin is a negative vector so in this case we have two vectors and both of them are moving into the right direction so here our resultant vector will be 8 which is in the positive direction newtons 8 newtons plus 3 newtons which is also in the right direction therefore our resultant vector will be 11 newtons to the right side then now when you want to represent it uh, as a, in, in a diagram then you take this 11 it means origin will be there and then now it's moving to the right all of it is moving to the right with 11 newtons in this case you have represented your vector either by calculation or diagrammatically now the second question look at the two vectors one moving to the right they are positive vectors the one moving to the left are negative vectors negative vectors so here we have 10 which is moving into the right so we will have 10 newtons plus we have one newton which is also moving to the right so we have plus one newton then we have a uh, plus three newtons which is moving to the left side so it will be plus negative three newtons because negative because it's moving in opposite direction as the first two vectors so in this case it will be resultant vector will be 10 plus 1 11 newtons minus positive times negative is negative minus 3 newtons then it will be 8 newton positive now if we want to represent this the resultant vector diagrammatically it will be origin will be there and then the resultant vector will be like this which is 8 newtons in that case you have also represented your back your vector diagrammatically diagrammatically but this is through calculation so sometimes you are asked using a diagram represent this vector and using a diagram represent this vector so you have to know how to represent diagrammatically also in calculation form so that is the end of our lesson today and that is the end of our topic force when we meet next time we'll talk about pressure which we are going to calculate as force over unit area that is our next topic stay tuned on ECLMO learning simplified